Welcome to the 96th Annual Commencement Ceremony. In a few moments, commencement ceremonies will be underway. I would like to make a few announcements to ensure our guests are comfortable and enjoy the ceremony. We are honored to have each of you here today to celebrate our graduating students' hard work and dedication. We ask that photography be done from your seats, not in the aisles. Also, please be mindful of the procession timing and remain seated until instructed to stand. It is also important that this event runs smoothly without any incident. However, we ask that each attendee be aware of their surroundings and report any suspicious activity they may see. Finally, I ask that all guests be courteous to one another on this special day. I would like to remind everyone of a few important details about the available amenities. Restrooms are available to the south of the tent next to the Honnold Library and in Stauffer Hall, which is located across the street. Please follow the posted signage. Refreshments along Dartmouth Avenue are available by Iron and Kin, a local Claremont Village coffee company. Flower and vendors are located at the east and west entrances of the tent. Water stations are located at each entrance to the tent on Dartmouth Avenue. Live streaming of the ceremony is available inside the air conditioning Albrecht Auditorium, which is also located in Stauffer Hall, just west of the tent. Medical services are also available at the west of the tent along Dartmouth Avenue. If you need assistance, please inform one of the many volunteers. Before we proceed with the procession, I would like to remind everyone to please be courteous and respectful of the graduating students and their families. This is a day that we will never forget, and it is important that we make it a positive and memorable experience for everyone. As we celebrate our graduates, let us also remember the wise words of Peter Drucker, who once said, the best way to predict the, fu predict the future is to create it. Graduates, you have the power to create your own futures and shape the world around you. I urge you to embrace this power and ignite the flame within. Congratulations, graduating class of 2023. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. <laughs> my, name, my name is Beverly Ryder, and I serve as vice chair of the board of trustees of Claremont Graduate University. On behalf of the board of trustees, it is my pleasure to welcome you to CGU's 96th annual commencement. Will the banner carriers please place your flags and return to your seats? Thank you. I would like to call upon one of the chaplains of the Claremont Colleges, Rabbi Hannah Elkin, to deliver this year's invocation. For our graduates, today not only marks the accomplishment, the realization of many of your goals of the past few years, but it also marks an important moment of transition. Today stands as a conclusion of a chapter and the beginning of the next, a moment of pause in the space between. In the Jewish tradition, when you are studying or performing a communal reading from, the book, uh, from a book of the Torah, and you finish one book and you go to start the next, you fill the pause between the two by reciting the phrase, chazak, chazak, venit chazek, meaning, be strong, be strong, and our strength will grow. In the pause between chapters, we recognize the wisdom, the successes, the strength that we gained from that one chapter and we take all that we gained as a launching pad into even more growth in the future. In this celebration, this pause between chapters in your lives, we say, chazak, chazak, venit chazek. May you draw strength and pride from your accomplishments, and may you continue to grow in that strength of self as you move forward. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Shehechianu V'Kiyamanu V'Higiyanu Lazman Hazeh. Blessed are you, source of the universe, who gives us life, sustains us, and allows us to reach this sacred moment. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi Elkin. It is now my great pleasure to introduce the president of Claremont Graduate University, Lynn Jessup, who will now conduct our commencement ceremony. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you, Beverly. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we did pretty well with the weather. This is a perfect day for this. Nice, cool, beautiful Southern California morning. Here we go. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, the faculty, the staff, and the students of Claremont Graduate University, it is my pleasure to welcome the Class of 2023. Congratulations. I'm just finishing up my fifth year here at CGU, and this is actually the first traditional commencement ceremony that we've held in four years. Think about that for a moment. Boy, yeah, that's a milestone. Because, of course, in 2020 and 2021, we were all in the throes of the pandemic, so we celebrated commencement online as best we could. We were all doing the best that we could. And then last year for commencement, a little non-traditional, we did it in a big way when we came back because we had all three graduating classes here at once, right here in the quad. And it was quite a gathering. And today, kind of back to normal in a sense, the spotlight is on one class a class that includes many who entered before the pandemic and are leaving after it. And so the arc of your experience is truly unique. So much has changed in the course of those years. Some of us faced significant isolation, yet persevered. Many of us found new, deeper meaning in relationships with family and friends. And nearly everyone now relies on Zoom, Microsoft Teams, FaceTime, discourse, I don't even know what that is, and a myriad other ways to communicate and collaborate with each other, Snapchat, whatever. All of us have emerged with a new lens with which we view the world. 
I'd like to think that our experiences over the past several years have steeled our commitment to make things count, live in the moment, as we learned from our MFA graduate, Zhen Wei, last night, to improve not only our individual lives and the lives of those we hold dear, but to also improve the lives of others, maybe outside of our direct sphere of influence, to truly strive to make a difference in this world, or as we would say here at CGU, to continue to carry the flame forward. That commitment is front and center in CGU's mission statement, and it rings true today more than ever. As president, I'm able to get, have so many incredible experiences and meet so many amazing people on campus and off. I get to participate in some incredible initiatives and events. This week, we had so many neat experiences that I got to be a part of. I've been so inspired by, inspired by all of that and all of you this past year. This spring in, in particular, just let me mention one experience. I had the opportunity to visit our new Yahaviatim Center for Health Studies, located right over there in that beautifully refurbished building that was, that was once the Huntley Bookstore. And since no, none of you are buying books in stores anymore, that we have, the bookstore moved, and then we were able to take over that space with the help of the San Manuel Band of Mission Indians. They helped us with the purchase of that building, and then the tribe and some trustees and some other donors helped us to do some renovations on it. And it's now the new home for our School of Community and Global Health. In a, yes. In a place where some truly life-changing and life-saving work is now taking place by them and other faculty and students. So anyway, during my visit this last spring, I was awestruck as I sat there by a painting hanging in the lobby. And that was by another MFA student, Julie Weaver Lawfer. Her award-winning work, she's a member of the Ojibwe Anishinaabeg tribe in Minnesota. And her beautiful two-panel painting titled, appropriately, Before We Were Distant, depicts an actual San Manuel powwow, which is a three-day celebration of Native American culture. The painting is a, it's a, it's an explosion of beautiful colors and people. The closer you look, the more each person depicted comes alive. Each is a testament to honoring and preserving their customs and traditions. And as I sat in the Ahavanam Center that day, I was marveling at Julie's painting, and it struck me just how wonderful this special university is. Because think about it, I was there to, that day to speak with the School of Community and Global Health faculty at their retreat in their new building, made possible by the San Manuel tribe and others. And then here I am looking up and I'm marveling at, Judy, at Julie's painting, a Native American student who happened to have painted a powwow at San Manuel, now hanging in the building. And it kind of all came around full circle together for me that day about why we do what we do and how what we do is so beautiful and important like Julie's painting. That building, its purpose, the help we got from our friends, leaning in, board members, donors, and partners on that integrated health and well-being initiative, the public health faculty there doing their work in that building, Julie's painting hanging there above, looking, looking out over everything we were doing, it all spoke to me about the importance of what we do and how good that makes me feel. It's so good to be here at CGU and be here with you today. And now, we're all together here today. It's our favorite day of the year. We track student outcomes. This is the most important one, is seeing you all here today doing this. All your hard work and accomplishments uh, coming to fruition. And for that, I salute you. salute you. Congratulations, everybody. I'm so proud of you. So happy for you. All right, before we begin with the ceremonies, I've got to acknowledge some of our platform party, the people who do so much to make this all work here at CGU. So behind me, I'm very grateful for CGU trustees who we have, deans and directors, we've got faculty and other senior leaders. So please join me in thanking all them for their invaluable con contributions to the university, making this day happen. And then let me just really quickly call attention to the people who have worked so hard behind the scenes to make this work, this event. Today, a lot of logistics go into this. Uh, many faculty and staff who took part in this year's commencement planning that goes all year long, as well as those who participated in various roles today. I'd like if they, if they would all raise their hands and so we can point them out behind me and out in the audience if you were involved in 
putting on commencement, raise your hands. Lisa, Manish, I see. Thank you all so much. And then just two people to point out, uh, just because uh, I want to. Uh, Professor Kathy Pezdek has been a part of every single CGU commencement since 1982. She's back here somewhere. <laughs> Kathy. I think, thank you. I think I was a junior at Chico State in 1982 and I was probably in trouble. Uh, and then finally, uh, from our office, the President's office, Cindy Berman, she's the, she kind of is the point person on commencement, the commencement committee, and I don't know where Cindy is, uh, but she's been literally working nights and weekends for the last month or two getting ready for this. Cindy, wherever you are, thank you so much. If you could give me a wave. I know she's here. And then a final recognition. Uh, we'll do a proper formal introduction later, but I'd like to recognize this year's commencement speaker and our honored guest, Dr. Alden Morris and his wife, Kim. You'll have an opportunity to meet Dr. Morris later in the ceremony, but I want to share how moved we all were to have him here and to learn of his journey from the Mississippi Delta at a, at a time when Jim Crow reigned to the heights of academia as a distinguished scholar and author and an unwavering voice for civil rights. Uh, Dr. Morris, thank you so much for being here. All right, let's get this started. We're on cue. We're gonna get underway with a, something we do at the beginning of every, every ceremony that's a special treat for us. We're gonna, uh, a time-honored tradition, a treasured moment that involves a very special award. And one of the things that make this award so special is that the winner today, a student uh, who is so deserving of the recognition and this vote of confidence, doesn't know that they're about to receive this award. So this will truly be a, a life-changing uh, moment. It will be a complete surprise. Pamela Mullen and her children created the Pamela M. Mullen Dream and Believe Award 23 years ago with a significant endowment, uh, a gift to the university. And for many years, Pam Mullen was a member of our Board of Trustees. She cast a shining light in the community and was an exemplar of stewardship. This award honors her memory and the inspiring way that she approached life. The award provides a generous stipend to a continuing doctoral student, and it enables that student uh, basically to not have to worry about finances and to follow their dream and have a positive impact on the world going forward. Just worry about the work and to not have to worry about everything else. I want to acknowledge some members of the Mullen family and their spouses, Brian and Kelly Mullen, who are here with their three kids, Stella, Sloan, and Cal, and then also Darcy and Matt Cobb, and Tim and Rebecca Mullen. I want to thank you all so much for supporting an award that has changed so many student lives over the years here, and then, they, of course, the effect that your mom had here as a trustee. So Kelly and Brian Mullen will now come up and present the Pamela M. Mullen Award on behalf of the Mullen family. So please give them a warm welcome. Thank you, President Jessup. The 23rd recipient of the Pamela M. Mullen Dream and Believe Award is a kind and generous person who persisted through challenges that would discourage many of us. But this person never quit. It is my privilege to invite to the stage doctoral student Wilfred Doucet from the School of Arts and Humanities and his faculty advisor, Professor Eve Oishi. Wilfred Doucet, in recognition of your deep devotion to nurturing the arts in underserved neighborhoods, focusing on projects that are collective, community-based, and fully accessible. 
your commitment to highlighting the vital role that the arts play in life, using your dissertation to shine a light on two African-American performing arts organizations in South Los Angeles whose work empowered their community and influenced American popular culture. Your personal artistic expression through poetry, leadership of writers' workshops, curation of African di diasporic films, and membership in the Joko Collective Grassroots Think Tank. Your perseverance in pursuing your PhD, teaching, mentoring, and generously sharing your gifts with the broader community, all while being present for your children and grandchildren as you struggled with cancer, thankfully now in remission. Your belief in the transformative power of sustained small actions and for your embrace of life and its infinite possibilities, a belief that inspires us all. Claremont Graduate University is pleased and honored to present you with the 2023 Pamela M. Mullen Dream and Believe Award, an award recognizing that dreams, in addition to learning, knowledge, and wisdom, truly matter. Congratulations, Wilfred. We hope that this is a pleasant surprise. <laughs> to receive this award, and we'd be honored to have you say a few words. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. wow. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is, well, I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly surprised, uh, really impressed with how I was brought here. <laughs> <laughs> Because I was told that I was going to be surprising someone else. But I'm just, you know, so that was perfect. Um, I, I appreciate all of you. I appreciate Claremont Graduate University. It's been a really wonderful passage in my life. Despite, you know, the obstacles that have emerged during this PhD journey, I've just been committed to keep going. Eve Oishi has been such an incredible support. Yes, that's right. Thank you. So, I mean, I, I, well, really, I'm, I'm almost speechless. I'm just trying to say something because I did not expect this at all. At all. I, I'm just, I'm so grateful. It feels great being here. Congratulations to all the, the graduates. And I'm going to get out the way so things can get rolling. But, you know, this is awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wilfred, thank you so much, and to the Mullen family, thank you for the continued tradition. Pretty good off-the-cuff remarks. That was amazing. I'm helped with a script. Well, Wilfred, the, the Mullen family believes in you. The university believes in you. You've got Eve and many other faculty believing you in, in you and your body of work and accomplishments. You've never stopped dreaming and believing. You're an inspiration and very deserving recipient of the award this year. And that's just a beautiful moment. It's one of the things I love about CGU. This is great. Once again, let's have a round of applause for Wilfred Doucet. I now have the privilege of introducing our commencement speaker officially, Dr. Alden Morris. If I limited this introduction to simply listing Dr. Morris's accomplishments, over his distinguished career, I, I would exceed my allotted time. Uh, so I'll, I'll be brief. Dr. Morris is an award-winning teacher, mentor, and civil rights scholar. He is, I believe, the preeminent writer on the black intellectual, and especially sociologist, W.E.B. Du Bois. He's a passionate activist. He's a difference maker. I encourage you to watch the 2017 short film, 
Alden Morris, the scholar, affirmed, which will deepen your appreciation of what fueled his contributions to academe and to society. Uh, great works on civil rights and on the field of sociology as well. This year's commencement theme is emergence and adaptation, reimagining in a new light and having new eyes. And Dr. Moore's journey has certainly done that. It's taken him from the Jim Crow South that saw the lynching of Emmett Till to an integrated school in Chicago that did not inspire its black students to dream of college, to warehouse and factory jobs that just barely paid the bills, to an education at Olive Harvey Junior College on the South Side that gave him his first taste of academic inquiry, and to advanced degrees at State University of New York, Stony Brook, that further drove his passion for social justice and then to a trailblazing scholarly life in sociology that has enriched the field and empowered others. And then to membership in the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, one of the nation's oldest and most prestigious honorary societies. So it's indeed a journey of emergence and a new light and a journey that has inspired others to reimagine what might be possible for them. So graduates, family, friends, and other guests it is my great honor to welcome this year's commencement speaker, Dr. Alden Morris. Good morning, CGU. Looking at the class of 2023, you are a magnificent sight to behold. And I'm just happy to be a part of this. Let me thank uh, uh, President Jessup uh, for that kind and generous introduction. Also want to thank the uh, commencement committee. Uh, I think that they probably played a role in selecting me for this year. Uh, also, Kim and I want to thank you for the beautiful fruit basket that greeted us in our hotel room. <laughs> now to the business at hand. I'm honored to participate in Claremont's Graduate University's 96th commencement ceremony. I extend my heartfelt congratulations to this beautiful 2023 graduating class whose members are receiving master's and doctorate degrees. Through your committed work, you have become highly educated citizens for which you have every right to be immensely proud. I also extend my heartiest congratulations to the parents, the professors, and communities who have made immeasurable contributions to make this wonderful day of achievement possible for the graduates. The theme, emergence and adaptation, reimagining in a new light and having new eyes has been chosen as the guiding declaration for today's graduation. And it is a most appropriate thing. We are indeed experiencing new challenges that emerge daily to which we must adapt. To confront these challenges, many which are excruciatingly troubling, you, the graduates, must focus your creative imaginations and new eyes on our danger-filled world. To you, 2023 graduates, I have a specific message. Your exquisite education acquired here at Claremont University has equipped you with creative imaginations and new eyes to confront and solve the perplexing problems that we face. The problem to which I refer are myriad uh, forms of social inequality, including racism, LGBTQ and gender discrimination, gun violence, threats of nuclear holocaust, climate change, and threats to our democracy itself. Graduates, you must lead your generation in tackling these momentous problems. Knowing you have attained the capacities to do so, thanks to your privileged education, you can make a real difference. So then don't let anyone convince you that you stand helpless 
in the face of epic problems that you did not create. Now is the time for you to step onto the world stage and seize the mantle of your generation to initiate major social transformations. The reason I know you can solve the problems of your generation is because my generation faced great problems, which we, to some extent, solved. I was born into Jim Crow racism in rural Mississippi, just 30 miles from where Emmett Till was lynched. Throughout the 50s, 1950s, I experienced a vicious system of racial oppression and economic exploitation. Those who resisted Jim Crow were met with violence and with lynchings. This system of racial oppression, which had been in place for a century, appeared unbreakable. Yet, Southern black people, many of them young people and college students, along with their white allies, rose up in creative protests, creative mass protests, and smashed Jim Crow. Now, it is true that as individuals, we must adjust to our world. None of us really want to be weirdos. But I want to say to you unequivocally that maladjustment is often needed to generate social change. Maladjustment in this sense refers to the development of a personality that resists injustice rather than to acquiesce to it. As Martin Luther King Jr. revealed, his male adjustment was key to his victorious activism in the civil rights movement. He once said, that is Dr. King once said, quote, I must honestly say there are some things in our nation and the world to which I am proud to be maladjusted and wish all good people, people of goodwill, would be maladjusted until the, the good society is realized. Dr. King continued, I never intended to adjust myself to segregation and discrimination. I never intended to become adjusted to religious bigotry. I never intend to adjust myself to economic conditions that take necessities from the many to give luxuries to the few, leaving millions of people smothering in an airtight cage of poverty in the midst of an affluent society. I never intend to adjust myself to the madness of militarism and the self-defeating effects of, of physical violence." End quote. So then the Jim Crow regime collapsed because a generation of young people resisted it by refusing to adjust to its awful oppression. Ending the 20-year Vietnam War was another transforming uh, experience of that, young, that young college people achieved a victory that they achieved. That in that war, a million and a half people died. A quarter of these were American soldiers. By the mid-1960s, there was no end in sight for this conflict between our leaders because they decided to escalate the war, thinking that es escalation would lead to victory. But because young people, people like you, knew better, they organized a mass anti-war movement that led to the stoppage of the war in the early 1970s. Now, another message I wish to convey to you, the graduates, is that you must develop a long-term vision. Social change is not achieved through acts to obtain instant gratification. A leader of the anti-Vietnam movement, Frank Joyce, explained it this way, quote, you will not know in the moment the real impact of what you're doing. And you may not know in a week. You may not know in a month. You may not know in a decade. But you are having an impact. Your action does matter. Never give up, end quote. Graduates, I leave you shortly with the words of the great movement leader, Ella Jo Baker, who declared, 
we who believe in freedom cannot rest. But graduates, for a brief moment, you've earned the right to rest, <laughs> to, to, to party, <laughs> and, 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 and celebrate your stellar achievements. Binge that season of succession you've been waiting to catch up on. <laughs> or rewatch Games of Thrones for the 10th time. <laughs> the completion of your education is an accomplishment to be cherished forever. There is one thing I can assure you, this troubling world will await your return. In a world where mass shootings, it is a world where, where mass shooting, murdering hundreds of innocent victims are commonplace. A world drenched in racism and beliefs in white supremacy. A world where books and ideas are being banned. A world where our planet Earth's very existence is in peril. A world torn, torn asunder by destructive wars a world where old men decide young women's reproductive choices. And a world where fascist authoritarian tendencies threaten our precious democracy. Thus, you will not be cheated out of your obligation to challenge and change these alarming tendencies. But just now, but just know, just know, we need you. Your community needs you. Our world needs you. You must have confidence in your abilities to make change and to boldly accept this awesome responsibility. You must do so because my generation made a sacred pact with your generation, which was then unborn, that we would make a world better for you, which you now inhabit. We trust you will pay it forward and, e and, and equally noble and, and, and fashion an equally noble pact for, common, for coming generations yet unborn. So for now, hearty, hearty congratulations to the class of 2023. Godspeed to you in your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Morris. Terrific, insightful, inspiring. And thank you for your work for making this world a better place and for, the, for inspiring us all to join you in that endeavor. Wow. Now it is time for this year's student speaker. Let's make sure I'm on my script here, yes. First, however, I want to take the opportunity to acknowledge our graduate student council officers. They've done so much to improve the quality of life of their fellow students over this past year. So will the members of the GSC who are in attendance please stand? I know I have at least one behind me. We've got a few others down here. Thank you all, excellent. The president, Asia Jones here, Vice President Timoteo Kenby, I think I saw over here, Treasurer Francis Asenga, and Secretary Steve Flores. Thank you all, well done. This spring, Asia Jones, a first generation college student, gave a moving and convincing dissertation defense, earning her PhD in education. And very soon, we'll all have the honor of, of honoring her and calling her Dr. Jones. Her research interests explore how mentorship shapes black girls' academic success in and out of the educational space. Her motto is, quote, from the streets to the suites. And you'll hear her say that to students and people she serves in the workplace and in the community. And she does so, and as she does so, she says, and I quote, as a first generation college student who came from the streets, my education has been able to take me to the suites of life, whether that has been in the classroom, the workplace, or the community. So please join me in welcoming Asia, who will introduce our student speaker. Asia?
distinguished guests, it's my pleasure to introduce Holly Eva Allen, your 2023 student speaker. Holly is graduating with a master's in um, English and a concentration in American studies. She's been an active member of the Graduate Student Council, serving as its secretary in 2021 and 20, through 2022, and is currently the president of the Queer Graduate Union. Holly is a CAFE fellow and preparing future faculty course and structure, and has also interned in Disability Studies, Division of the University of Michigan, One Academy Education Project. Holly is a talented writer, and educating, founding Horned Things Literary Journal, serving as co-editor-in-chief of CGU, well that's a little loud, CGU's Football Poetry Journal, and working as an assistant prose for Editor's Passengers Journal. Her academic writing has appeared in research respected journals such as Women's Studies, Interdisciplinary Literary Studies, and Intersections, while her creative writing has been published in magazines, books, and site like, sites like Hairs, Paws Literacy Journal, Far Side Review, and On the Run Fiction. With her research interests that span queer theory, American literature, honor and disability studies, Holly aims to be a scholar and educator who prioritizes accessibility, inclusivity, and all aspects of her work. Please join me in welcoming Holly Eva Allen. Thank you. Greetings colleagues, faculty, administrators, and esteemed guests. I am so pleased to be with you all here today. I would like to start with a philosophical concept. For those of you worried about the soporific effects of philosophy, I'll be brief. Some of you may have previously heard of Plato's allegory of the cave. In this allegorical cave, there are cave dwellers, prisoners, facing the cave wall who see only shadows produced by hand puppets used by performers standing between them and a burning fire. The cave dwellers might see the shadow of a tree produced and call it a tree because it is all that they have ever known. Were they to turn around, they would see the truth of this situation, a farce, a play produced in front of a fire. If they were to step outside the cave, they might see a real tree for what it is, or even the sun, a more powerful, perpetual source of light than the burning fire inside the cave. I can confidently say that when I applied for graduate study, whatever I expected was not unlike the shadows in Plato's allegorical cave. That is to say that as a first generation college student, I knew that graduate study was rigorous work, but I didn't know the nuance, the detail, the shading, or the dimensions of graduate study, nor how formative, complex, and meaningful it could be. My first year of graduate school was spent adapting to the amount of work expected. And while learning to manage my studies was an achievement, it would be inaccurate to say that completing coursework alone defines the graduate experience. In thinking back to Plato's allegory, Completing coursework alone is akin to the cave dwellers turning around and seeing the fire burning behind the performers. The flame could therefore be seen as a symbol of wisdom, a first step towards learning the greater truth of the world. It is therefore very fitting that CGU's symbol is the flame since CGU itself has been a source of learning for all of us. Of course, in order for the cave dwellers to truly be free, they must take the initiative to depart from the cave and experience the light of the sun. Similarly, the truth of the matter is that coursework alone does not define the graduate experience. We can make our own graduate experiences more enlightening and rewarding by exploring opportunities beyond formal coursework. Being a part of a student union, presenting at an academic conference, or taking part in research are only a few examples of how one might do this. In 2021, I became the Graduate Student Union Secretary, and in 2022, I became co-editor-in-chief of CGU's own Foothill Poetry Journal, and was also the president of the Queer Graduate Union. These were truly formative experiences that led me towards making meaningful connections with others in my field. I know many of you have had very similar experiences, 
due to the vast number of opportunities available here to you at CGU. At CGU, there are so, so many opportunities to step outside the cave if you do just take that first step. In taking part in these community building activities, we both seek out a truer light and simultaneously spark a fire within ourselves. Perhaps then, there is no more fitting motto for Claremont Graduate University than that which it possesses, multi lumina lux una, many flames, one light. There are so many different fields, concentrations, and paths you may have taken to get here, but together they compose a single striking light, a purpose and a dedication to one's community at large. This year's theme asks us to reimagine things in a new light. When looking forward, there is no better light by which to see, no better sun beyond the cave than that which we light ourselves. Shine forth. Congratulations, graduating class of 2023. Holly, perfect in Asia. Well done. And they'll head down now to, to join you all. All right, here we go. This morning, we follow one of the great traditions of the university, the conferral of the honorary degree upon an individual whose achievements inspire and guide us. This individual will receive the degree Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, in recognition of his significant accomplishments, which have enriched our understanding of the world, and as I said, have helped us to see things in a new light. To present this year's honorary degree recipient, I call on Professor Gary Gaukler, Chair of the Faculty, to please come forward. Thank you, Gary. Gary will now recognize the candidate. University. Hang on, Gary, your mic was off, and if you would start, and then I'm going to also, while you're getting ready and the mic is hot, I'm going to ask CGU, CGU Board of Trustees Vice Chair Beverly Ryder to come forward again, and Provost Michelle Bly, they're going to assist me up here, and we'll ask Dr. Morris to please step forward also for the conferral. We'll meet down at the X. Okay, now with the mic on, good morning. <laughs> By vote of the faculty of Claremont Graduate University and with the approval of the Board of Trustees, I am pleased to present Dr. Alden Morris for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Dr. Alvin Morris, motivated by your lived experience and your passion for justice, you have sought to shine a much needed light on civil rights movements and black liberation through the lens of a sociologist. Your groundbreaking scholarship has both challenged and enriched the field. You became the first in your family to attend college and through fierce persistence you achieved heights you could not have envisioned when you started the journey. Your doctorate in sociology at Stony Brook University 
marked the beginning of a sterling academic career that has included the Leon Forrest Professorship at Northwestern University, the presidency of the American Sociolog Sociological Association, and election to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. As a rigorous scholar and award-winning author, you questioned the canon and inspired colleagues to rethink their understanding of sociology. Your landmark book entitled The Scholar Denied, W.E.B. Du Bois and the Birth of Modern Sociology elevates the importance of an academic and civil rights activist whose analysis of modernity gave proper weight to the intersecting determinants of racial hierarchies, colonization, slavery, patriarchy, and resistance movements. This social matrix has proved pivotal in understanding the modern world. As an unwavering advocate and activist for the oppressed and the voiceless, you offer hope to those who seek their rightful place in society. Dr. Alden D. Morris, because of your academic accomplishments and influence in reshaping the field of sociology, because of your unwavering commitment to social justice, and because of the way your life inspires others to follow in your footsteps, upon the recommendation of the faculty and with approval of the Board of Trustees of Claremont Graduate University, we confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters honoris causa, with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereunto. Excellent. Thanks, Gary. Well done. And Alden and Kim, thank you so much for being with us. That really means a lot to us, thank you. All right, we now come to the time when we celebrate today's candidates who have completed their courses of study and other requirements to, see, to receive their degrees. To all of you graduating, again, I offer my congratulations. And to award the degrees you have earned, we shall proceed in the following way. First, we'll present candidates for the degrees as a group and confer all the doctoral and master's degrees. Then, we'll ask each graduate to come forward to the stage to be recognized individually. May I ask Provost Bly to present the candidates for the various degrees. Michelle? Good morning. Are you ready? Will the candidates for the Doctor of Philosophy, Doctor of Musical Arts, and Doctor of Public Health please rise and remain standing. <laughs> Mr. President, I present the candidates for the doctoral degree, the highest earned degree of Claremont Graduate University. Thank you, Provost Bly. By granting you this degree, the university signifies its confidence that you have made an original and important contribution to human knowledge and that you will continue a life of scholarship that benefits humankind. Upon the recommendation of the faculty, and with the approval of the Board of Trustees of Claremont Graduate University, it is my privilege to confer upon you the doctoral degree with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto and welcome you to the ancient and venerable community of scholars. Congratulations to you all. Will the candidates for the doctoral degree please be seated until we call you to come forward to be recognized individually. Will the candidates for master's degree please rise and remain standing. <laughs> Mr. President, I present our candidates for master's degrees.
right, thank you, Provost Bly. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and with the approval again of the Board of Trustees of CGU, it is my privilege to confer upon you the appropriate master's degree with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. Congratulations, master's graduates. Will the candidates for master's degrees please be seated until we call you to come forward to be recognized individually. At this time, I invite President Jessup to step forward as we honor our individual degree recipients. As the marshals instruct you to do so, will the candidates for the Doctor of Public Health, Doctor of Philosophy, and Doctor of Musical Arts please come forward to be recognized individually as your marshals direct. Will the faculty from the Institute of Mathematical Sciences please come forward and be prepared to hood your doctoral students as they approach the podium. No, just this one. Where's the banner? All right, now we're really ready. <laughs> Bara Maktam. Zijuan Jia. Danielle Akesh. <laughs> Maxwell Force.
Will the faculty from the School of, uh, the Institute, excuse me, of Mathematical Sciences please be seated, and will the faculty from the School of Community and Global Health please come forward and pre prepare to hood your doctoral students as they approach the podium. Dominique Rude. <gasps> Samantha Jane Martinez. Elizabeth Bayardo. And will the faculty from the School of Community and Global Health please be seated? And I would like to welcome the faculty from the School of Educational Studies to please come to the podium to hood your doctoral students. Joe Luis Hernandez. Gonzalez. Rashni Devni Lal. Darius Hines. Toby Madaboko. <laughs> Irene Preciado. Iwa Bouchard.
Jeanette Debray Newman. Jennifer Lynn Tucker Matas. Vin Quang Tran. Maria Keckler. Charlene Elizabeth Holkenbrink Monk. <laughs> Kayleen Lee Smith. Mayin Kader. Maritza Azucena Salazar Cha. Elita McFadden. <laughs> Francis Baez.
Kenya Marshall Harper. Adrian Ortega Magallanes. Francesca Alejandra Ocasio. <laughs> Jamila Helena Jamison. Tiffany Jan Janelle Smith. Asia Jones. Will the faculty from the School of Educational Studies please be seated? And will the faculty from the Center for Information Systems and Technology please come forward to hood your graduates as they approach the podium? Frederic Keith Johnson. Wang Thule. Anna Zakalviska. Anthony Craig Leons Sr. Ali Nusser. <laughs> Jamie 
Yuna Suakian. Robert Carl Marone. Yubu Fu. Richie Yu. <laughs> Jeffrey Harry Harwell. Ufsa Karim Asi. Jean Marie Holm. Thank you. Will the faculty from the Center for Information Systems and Technology please be seated? And may I invite the faculty from the Division of Behavioral and Organizational Sciences to the podium to hood their graduates. Michael Edward Knapp. <laughs> Megan Benzing. Veronica V. Scott. Alicia Davis.
Elise Laurel Pastaway. Christopher Lijun Chen. <laughs> Benjamin Falls. Cecilia Lee Dotzler. Laura Dunhauser. Shapiro. Jessica Brule Barrett Diaz. Amber and Kia Edwards. Anne Cormia. Don Michelle Moore. Kevin Pablo Rosales.
Allison Tiffany Young. Brian Riches. Tara Parnip Vikila Mushido. Danielle Rose Blazik. Karen Tannenbaum. <laughs> David Michael Mendelssohn. Christina Elena Tanglinen White. <laughs> Mona Farid Najad. Shin Han. <laughs> Lindsay Danielle Quarles. Will the faculty from the Division of Behavioral and Organizational Sciences please be seated? And may the faculty from the Division of Politics and Economics please come to the podium to hood your graduate. Anna Ortiz Salazar. <laughs> Jamela Klichiva. <laughs> 
Lama Tariq Sheikh. Chiyun Lori Lee. <laughs> Jing Yu Wang. Shane Shu Marisa Mendoza. Amelia Eklaji. Shen Shen Zhang. Matthew Gomez. Muhammad Saeed Al Shuwakat. <laughs> Cheng Cheng Zhang. Rainita B. Narender. Yeah. 
Shanika Johnson. Joseph James Lake. <laughs> James Joseph Hoffman. Lauren Candia Schaefer. Ahmed Abuzam. <laughs> Abdul Rauf. Abdul Salam El Akhtar. Abdullah Saad Asuwali. <laughs> Bawaz Sudan Alotabi. Rowan Khalid Alotheim. <laughs> Sahar Yusuf Alutniebit. <laughs> Yudistira Slamet. <laughs> 
Saquon Kim. Jing Jing An. Dan Dan Kovarsh. <laughs> Makwo Chukwa Ijoabuma Okooma. Manish Srivastav. And will the faculty from the Division of Politics and Economics please be seated? And I would like to welcome the faculty from the School of Arts and Humanities to the podium to hood your graduate. Marisa Celeste Alcaraz. Carrie Melissa Dean. Jung Lim Lee. <laughs> Seung J. Chung. Jiyoon Kim. <laughs> H 
Heather Marie Burrow. Denise Michelle Johnson. Jessica Lee Spence Moss. Orbic Pada. Arlene Karen Bortrubra. Keandra S. Jimenez. Daniel Whitcomb on board. A young sock. <laughs> Diana Lou. Linda Guadalupe Claros.
Kimberly Tiemann Carroll. Adrian Domasen. <laughs> Melody Huichi Lin. Esther Bach. soon. <laughs> Rebecca Holman Williams. Marisol Sanchez. <laughs> Kenneth Michael Kotich. Jody Gold Reed. <laughs> K. 
Keith Rice. Will the faculty from the School of Arts and Humanities please be seated? We will now recognize the recipients of the Masters of Fine Arts degree. Will the faculty from the Art Department please step forward to hood your graduates as they approach the podium, thank you. Randy Neeson. Jennifer Greenwood. <laughs> Kevin Johnson. Wai Jing Li. Linda M. Stelling. Zen Wei. I would now like to invite the art faculty to return to their seats, and we would now like to recognize candidates who are not able to be in, here in person, but are joining us live remotely, and it is our pleasure to acknowledge their achievement. We acknowledge the following degree recipients. Center for Information Systems and Technology, Neelam Rajaganjar, Doctor of Philosophy in Information Systems and Technology. 
Division of Politics and Economics, Rebecca Castaneda, Doctor of Philosophy in Political Studies. School of Educational Studies, Amanda Castillo, Doctor of Philosophy in Education. Division of Politics and Economics, Jun Lin Chang, Doctor of Philosophy in Political Science. Drucker School of Management, Gloria Aladeshula, Master of Science in Finance. Center for Information Systems and Technology, Josue Karamas, Master of Science in Information Systems and Technology. Division of Politics and Economics, David DuPont, Master of Arts in Politics. School of Community and Global Health, Matthew Julius Foshue, Master of Public Health. School of Arts and Humanities, Gabrielle Fox, Master of Arts in Applied Gender Studies. Institute for Mathematical Sciences, Jorge Solomon Fuentes, Masters of Science in Mathematics. Drucker School of Management, Christian Aaron Settles, Master of Arts in Management. Center for Information Systems and Technology, Brenda Vazquez Orozco, Master of Science in Information Systems and Technology. School of Arts and Humanities, Courtney Wallace, Master of Arts in Arts Management. Please join me in congratulating these graduates. At this time, we would like to honor the individual master's degree recipients. Will Chair of the Faculty, Gary Gockler, please come forward to the podium, and will Board of Trustees Vice Chair, Beverly Ryder, please join President Jessup on the podium. I will now call the candidates for the master's degree to please come forward to be recognized individually. Susan Hawk. Andrew Nicholas. Bailey Patricia Hong. Jessica Pei Freeman Wong. Sarah Moridi. Deja Darrington. Emily Anna Hires. Wayne Chung. Maureen Lourdes Ruiz Sundstrom. Hannah Gowan. Anna Elisa Guillen. Yannick Leno. Gudalia Lopez. Grace Lynn Fu. Mario Edward Zarati Jr. Cassandra Rivera Asensio. Levan Gunimian. Delena Alexis Dubon Guadrama. Emily Celesti 
Cortez. Zachary Ryan Ward. Raylene Ellen Luna. Jennifer Ashley Tagudar Oduka. Paulina Regoza. Brenna Michelle Kaziran. Linda Lamb. Kareen Nicole Benlian. David Estudiante. Diederik Severin Astrup Westby. Gabriella Krupa. Kali Ashmoon. Adriel Alfaro. Ariana Teresa Dalia. Hector Garcia. Madison Janae Kwan. Samantha Velezquez Albarca. Matthew Kevin Schultz. Nancy Soto. Daisy Mungia. Juliana Valencia Martinez. William Nathan Miles. Samantha Claire Diaz. Michael Patrick Collins. Christina T. Bow. Dominic Norris. Tanya Alvarado. Mark Andrew Carling. Spencer Randall Hanna. Tristan Schuyler Noble. Shelby Smith. Jason Robert Kennel. Teresa Guan. Mason Hughes. Vaishnav Reddy Siddhapuredi. Matty James Klein. Ben Doherty. Alicia Catherine Duarte. Angel Garcia. Emily Danielle Serrano. Ivan Ramos. Marciela Regina Saunders Bibbins. Yoshihilo Nogi. Marco Antonio Torres. Eric Hung. Ricky Russell Darrow. Melanie Santibanes. Alexis Duro, San Gabriel Band of Mission Indians.
Valeri Javier Merotic. Catherine Courtney Howell. Mengxia Xiong. Holly Eva Allen. Jonathan Cortez. Hannah Brooke Fradkin. Jose de Jesus Barajas. Emily Esperanza Escobar. Josh Reeder. Samantha Cabrea. Matthew Villasenor. Carolyn Rachel Good. Danielle Moran. Kianwen Wei. Yoon Jong Kim. Mackenzie Joe Dolan. Nicole Heskin. Pilar Von Homo. Sarah Ann Banker. Valerie Tepe Tlanco. Johannes Kuniaban. Dieris Lewis Mayfield. <laughs> Chi Bin Cheng. Michael Andrew Morin. <laughs> Mahavir Babulal. Chloe Isabella Marcelli. Jason Chan. Samantha Siebert. Carolina Salguero. Stephanie Denise Jarrett. Itzia Graciela Chavez Ortiz. Jose Andres Serrano. Melissa Barati Jawaharlal. Tatiana Marie Willing. Alyssa Rubacaba. Alan Aina Cameron. Samantha Avila. Morgan Taylor Fouché. Caleb Isaac Portales. Josette Zinnaker. Francesca Priscilla Villarreal. Georgiana Yasamura. Akshit Joshi. Luke Dip Nguyen. Seher Yuxel. Chelsea Sichao Liu. Gabriela Padilla. Justina Labib. Kayla Wilson Weaver. 
Enrique Salas Limon. Lauren Suzanne Martin Sumaeta. Michaela Jean Malzi. McKenna Ray Ward. Marissa Paige Schuling. Mitchell Lopez. Taylor La Carrier. Gaetana Canti Wilmot. Lauren Taylor Davila. Arlene Berberoglu. Paige Allison Bullock. Catherine Duffy. Monica Catherine Baker. Monica Solorzano Colligan. Lee Painter Kim. Daniel Carl Stump. Jessica Delgado. Steve Schaefer. Julissa Contreras Castellon. Max Allen James Smith. Lauren Kirkland. Stephen John Wolf. Sydney Page Santos. Brian Anthony Ventura. Andrew Statham. Kajal Nilesh Shet. Amada Sylvia Luna. Sweta Patel. Miko Ashling Gomez. Al Shubaili Muatasim Abdulaziz. Tiffany Park. Daniel Sepian. Ibuka Jude Ogwudire. Adam Parsley. Giselle Celeste Velasquez. Camille Cosini. Gabrielle May Villa. Mason Thomas. Rebecca Gemma Phillips. Clarissa Ann Pascal. David Michael Bando. Kristen Rose Kluwer. (laughs) 
Savannah Nicole Leslie. Layla Raman. Michael Anthony Byfield Jr. Priyanka Pulianda. Ryan Emilio Juarez. Bryce Madison Watson. Caitlin Gallagher. Vanessa Diana Centeno. Tabitha Lynn Abbey. Karen Lisbeth Godina. Tessa Dorfler. Kira Allison Terry. Christopher Michael Verano. Alyssa Elizabeth Tracy. Madison West Jaffe. Wesley Fernando Duarte. Pamela Loren Campos. Tony Chen. Jeannie Antonini Martinez. Olivia Zhang. Joseph Reyes. Mirela Faleros Rezende. Mary Peterson. Vinless Daly. Aaron Michael Farnsworth. Gabriel Joy Fedema. Hannah Elizabeth Rouse. Tian An Ding. Isamar Munez Marroquin. Kieran Matthew John. Shika Nisho. Madeline Julia Esna. Deepthi Parthusaruthi. Margaret Cole. Sarah Jane Guile. Lori Sanchez. Isaac Godoy. Andre Luis Alvarez. Samit Kataria. William Miles Floyd. Cherise Serenade Stahl. Kimberly Sheldon. Danielle Lanelle Wallace. Justin Lee. Alicia Villasenor.
Catherine Lu Weber. Luisa Gianuca. Nina Doors. Brittany Michelle Avella. Daniel Leonard Lifshitz. Thomas Bernard Colson. Tianmin Kong. Lin Gu. Kevin Carrillo. Evelyn Fidelina Guido. Christopher Joseph Box. Chandan Deep Singh. Nicholas Anthony Del Biagio. Sartak Gupta. Tina Muzarfari Bad Action. Kush Pragnesh Shah. <laughs> James Rambua. <laughs> Yuan Zhou. Angela R. Haurigi. Dominic Lee. Fabiana Mamola. Davinder Singh Gotra. Bavika Anad. Alia Al Sharif. Booker Dean Harap. Mohammed Akram Mohammed Rauf. Kelsey Lorraine Gobert. Quinlan Alexander. That's it? That is it. Pranav Ravi Krishna. David Castaneda. Cameron Cacananta. Mariam Mukta. Jasmine Natalie Dominguez. David Padula. Isabella Nicole Johnson. And Yi Kung. Yeah. 
Bukola Joy James. Enrique Robles. Linda Stephanie Solval. Suan Cheng Sun. Satya Medas Vivek Pande. Nitipon Munvicit. Chudi Ibe. Hearty congratulations to all of our graduates today. All right, we are almost there. Bear with us. We're not quite yet at the finish line, but we're close. As this commencement ceremony winds down, we come to an important tradition, the charge to this year's graduates. And we have our speaker this year is the vice president of our Alumni Association Board, Laron Marks. Laron, will you please join me here at the podium? Laurent is the Human Resource Director for both Bird Mill Supply USA and Classic Fibers International. She earned her PhD in Organizational Behavior from the School of Social Science Policy and Evaluation in 2016 and was integral in the launching of the Certificate Program in Organizational Development and Change Leadership offered here at the Drucker School. The expertise she developed at CGU prepared her as an Organizational Development Consultant in industries as diverse as education, country clubs, entertainment, and waste management. And she's a fellow at the Kravis Leadership Institute and a valuable member of our Alumni Association Board. Laron? Thank you. All right. Well, this year's theme of emergence and adaptation reinforces the notion that we need to be able to reimagine work with a new light. And as the transition from student to scholar, you have the great privilege and responsibility to utilize what you have learned to make a lasting difference. The ability to create, to design, the future is going to require you to not only think critically and creatively, but also reflexively so that you will be ready to see things in a new light. So reflexivity, in the most general sense, involves taking a look at ourselves and evaluating our beliefs and assumptions over time. It means we question the basis of our thinking, we surface the taken for granted rules that guide our decisions, we critically examine our practices, how we're experienced, how we show up, and how we interact with our environment. By adopting a reflective practice, we empty ourselves of our standard ways of thinking, and we open ourselves to new possibilities. And that means we develop the capacity to interrogate new data, to use new frameworks, and to arrive at new outcomes without getting stuck in the past. Reflexivity ultimately impacts our understanding of ourselves, of our environment, but what's more, the knowledge that we're able to create. As a graduate of CGU 
you've already developed some of the foundational components of reflexivity. You have learned to think critically and deeply about the world around you. And so my ask is that you continue your reflexivity practice. Use different lenses, employ different perspectives, challenge your assumptions so that you not only elevate your understanding of change, but also your ability to create something new and better. Your next stage is going to require you to build on that foundation. You must do the inner work to embrace reflexive practice and expand your consciousness of not only who you are, but how you show up in your life. You must become clear on how you derive meaning and the type of work that fuels your sense of, of purpose. Things are gonna happen along the way, some good, some not so good. But just remember that change, whether good or bad, is an opportunity for growth, an opportunity to test our limits, our capabilities, our faith. I'm gonna tell you a quick story. I know uh, I'm the last speaker before closing remarks, so just lean in for two minutes and we'll get this done. We'll, we'll end this, we'll close this together, okay? <laughs> So when I first arrived on campus, I went from being a big fish in a small pond to being a goldfish in the sea of CGU. Uh, I looked around that first day and I thought, wow, I'm in a different league. And so after a particularly difficult midterm, I reached out to the TA and I asked her to meet. So we sat down and through my tears, I, I asked, I said, how did you do it? What's the secret to being successful here? And she said something so simple, yet so profound that it stayed with me all these years. She said, you show up. You show up. You show up when you're ready. You show up when you're not. You show up when it's raining or when there's no parking or when you haven't done the reading or you haven't turned in the assignment. If it's important to you, you put one foot in front of the other and you make it happen. I went home that night and I remember thinking and questioning every decision I had made up until that point. What's more, I also thought about the assumptions and framework that were guiding my, my path forward. You see, up until that point, I was operating under the assumptions that you had to be perfect to be successful. And that experience, I walked away understanding that life doesn't unfold in pretty sequence stages, that things that are hard are oftentimes important, and that I can take steps forward even if I don't feel prepared to take them. This particular day was significant because it was then that I solidified my decision to pursue my doctorate. I was gonna put one foot in front of the other. I was going to make it happen. The goals you will be working towards will be difficult and complex. Discomfort and uncertainty are to be expected. Let today be an affirmation to believe in yourself and trust that you have something important to contribute. Through your growth and reflexive practice, you will not only make an impact, but you'll also leave a legacy for others to follow. So as the graduating class of 2023, you are part of a larger network of CGU alumni, and we are here and ready to support you. On behalf of the Alumni Association, I want to commend you on this notable accomplishment. You put one foot in front of the other and you made it happen. Congratulations. All right, thank you, LaRon. Perfect, love the story. Okay, members of the class of 2023, we're coming to a close here. I want you to remember something important. Your involvement with CGU doesn't end with commencement. You'll always be a part of this community carrying this flame forward. 
we invite you to join us all, CGU alumni and everyone in the audience, uh, in building a university that makes a, the world a better place through the research and the teaching and the practice that goes on here. You now join that family. We're glad to have you in it. As I said, the symbol of the university is the flame. I wish you great success in carrying that flame forward in the next stage of your lives. As we conclude our ceremony, I'm going to need the banner carriers from each school to please come forward and retrieve your school's banner. There they go. And as they come forward, good job. Good job, Fred. And as they're doing that, I'm going to ask the audience members to please remain seated, if you would, and keep the aisles clear until our graduates exit. And then for the graduates, please wait until the platform party comes by, and then you'll come out. And then you're all cordially invited to participate in the receptions that are provided for our graduates in each of the various schools and centers and institutes, uh, and your guests. And they're all listed in the commencement program where those are, and there are also people who can direct you. Thanks, everyone, for attending. It is my pleasure to announce that the 96th annual commencement of Claremont Graduate University is now officially closed. Thank you, graduates. Thank you.